I'm Penny ST, and I'm the host of Peace with Penny. Welcome. Next week, we'll be taking a bit of a break from the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Don't they wish they could do the same? We'll be looking at the unique way that Lior Eisenberg, an Israeli with his organization Chess for Solidarity, is working on peace between Israelis and other countries by holding chess competitions. That's right, bridging the gap of understanding while enjoying a friendly game of chess. Why not join us on February 9th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time? Lior has put together chess tournaments for years with over a dozen international competitions, five with Arab countries, some in the United States, and since the Abraham Accords, he has already had competitions between Israelis and Morocco and the Sudan. He gained acclaim when he challenged Saudi Arabia during the World Chess Championships after Israel had been boycotted from playing for 32 years. It's an interesting story you won't want to miss. The first two episodes of Peace with Penny had both an Israeli and a Palestinian peace activist discuss their incredible work bringing together Israelis and Palestinians in a variety of ways building pathways of hope. If you missed either one, you can watch them on my website, Penny S T E E, like my last name, dot com. Look under the tab Podcasts as each of the recordings are posted. One listener wrote about our first episode, riveting, fascinating, wonderful. I hope you'll choose to share them with your friends. If you think of any questions you'd like to ask either myself or Lior, please send them to me at pennyst.com. So how did I get involved with wanting to work on peace? It was the summer of 2014, and for my son's bar mitzvah present, just like many Jewish parents, we wanted him to bond with the Holy Land. Oh, it worked perhaps too well. My husband had stayed back at the hotel, and our friends, my son and I, had just stopped in a pharmacy. Run! Run to the bomb shelter, sweetie! Please! Please hurry! I didn't hear the sirens at first, but the Israelis did. They're used to hearing these things. We ran to the back of the storeroom. It was a 12 foot by 24 foot windowless bomb shelter. My heart's pounding. Boom! Boom! I hear it and feel the percussion of the exploding bombs. I'm trying not to get sick. I look at my 13 year old son and I think I'll never forgive myself if something happens to him. That's an excerpt from a speech I gave to the Orange County Jewish Bar Association. It was the first, but not the last time we had to run to a bomb shelter. Our adventure and my transformation is also the subject of my book, Blasted from Complacency, A Journey from Terror to Transformation in Israel. There is no chapter in a parenting book on what to do when a war starts and you're on a family vacation. Think touring extraordinary and sacred sites mixed with cowering in bomb shelters. I'm still trying to get over the Jewish guilt of taking my son to war for his bar mitzvah present. The impact of being human targets helped me understand the plight of Israelis living like this, and it also made me want to work on peace. How Israel is often described on the news is not what I'd seen with my own eyes. And I felt Palestinian parents also preferred their children playing safely in their backyards. The missiles exploded just near enough to blow apart my world as I knew it, forever changing me. And you'd never recognize my life today with what it was like then. I believe I found my life's purpose. I hope you can join Lior with me on February 9th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and learn how even playing chess can open doors for tolerance and peace. Tuesday, we will be on Zoom at the link at the end of this clip. I'd also be happy to send you the link if you send me an email request, or if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at penny at penny, the letter S, T-E-E, like my last name, dot com. Thank you, and may you live in peace, shalom, and salam.